I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Brent Zhu, founder and CEO of UMI. Brent, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really great to be here. Likewise, I'm excited to dive into your insights in the DeFi industry and the solutions that UMI's working on. I'd love to just kick off the conversation by hearing an overview of sort of the main solutions that you and your team um, have been working on for, for quite some time now, and then we'll dive into all things DeFi. Yeah, certainly. So uh, happy to give you an overview of UMI. So uh, UMI is a cross-chain DeFi protocol that interconnects between the Cosmos and the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. And we're building out a suite of DeFi tools that can fit into the broader money Legos ecosystem. Uh, UMI is a base layer protocol. It's a blockchain in and of itself. Uh, it's built using the Cosmos SDK. It runs uh, Tendermint, BFT, Proof of Stake consensus. And I'd say that I can uh, separate what UMI is building into a um, uh, uh, short-term, medium-term, and long-term vision. Uh, short-term, we're building cross-chain borrowing and lending. So basically, you have the ability to leverage assets on one blockchain and borrow on another. For example, you leverage assets on Ethereum, borrow on Cosmos, leverage assets on Cosmos, borrow on Ethereum, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we want this to be a universal protocol, uh, something that expands to the, the avalanches of the world, the Solanas, the, the Polygons, um, as well as uh, just, just any protocol. The goal is that you deposit any asset and borrow any asset from any chain on a universal platform. So that's crossing bar and lending for UMI. Uh, Midterm, uh, we want to rebuild some financial primitives. For example, we want to rebuild things such as a uh, yield curve, uh, which is known as a term structure of interest rates for borrowing and lending. A yield curve is very important because this is a tool that is used to price opportunity costs and effectively price time value in different aspects of finance. And uh, you know, UMI as a as a um, borrowing and lending hub is is going to be building out some of these primitives. And long term, we have the vision that we think that the entire debt markets, the debt capital markets, can be rebuilt using crypto technology. We think that it can be rebuilt more efficient. Uh, it can be re-implemented. And every part of blockchain and crypto is able to replicate every other aspect of the of the global debt markets. And I'd say that's our definitely our long term mission and what we want to build. Mm. Very exciting visions, Brent, and thank you for that intro. And uh, I can imagine, you know, in the long-term vision, once all the debt markets and, and most of the capital markets move to blockchain, you know, the, the market capitalization of cryptocurrency is almost nothing compared to what, what it will be when that happens. So a lot to look forward to. Um, now let's dive into more of the present moment. And you're talking about the short-term vision on uh, having cross-chain lending, making it really easy to, to leverage your assets without having to you know, move them to another blockchain or to sell them and, and move them around. Um, how long has your team been working on this and, and where are you right now in making that vision a reality? Certainly. So we've been working on this for a little bit over a year. Um, so we launched UMI back in uh, uh, May of 2021. And so far, uh, we've made some tremendous progress. So we uh, right now, uh, on the, the UMI blockchain is currently launched. It's mainnet launched. Um, it, uh, it, the blockchain is running, uh, is processing blocks and processing transactions, running Tendermint BFT. We have a network of great validators out there, as well as you know a fairly tremendous community uh, that's building different tools and infrastructure to support the blockchain. Um, we have a borrowing and lending protocol on Ethereum right now. And right now you're able to deposit a Cosmos asset, borrow stable coins, and you're also able to deposit uh, stable coins and, and borrow uh, things such as Cosmos atoms using, this, uh, using our existing application. We have a mainnet upgrade in about a few weeks. Uh, this mainnet upgrade will add a Cosmos SDK based leverage module to the UMI blockchain. And what this will allow is IBC transactions that will facilitate this barn and lending. So this upgrade is being tested right now in testnet format. 
in our test net, um, we have an incentivized test net running. Um, it's been running for about a month, uh, and we have a faucet affiliated with the test net. Mm. The faucet distributes about a thousand dollars worth of uh, either Juno, Osmo, um, Umi, or uh, Atom uh, every day uh, in a 24-hour period. Mm. And so far on our test net, we've accumulated close to 40 billion worth of TVL, um, roughly uh, 120,000 um, unique addresses interacting with the test net, as well as 30 million transactions. So. We're hoping to build on some of that positive momentum as we're going to be upgrading the the test net to, to mainnet in a few weeks. Wow, that's incredible to hear. And uh, 40 billion TVL on the test net is is huge um, already. You know, I've I've seen some of the top projects that just um, on their mainnet, you know, they really don't have that much yet. But it's, I feel like a lot of the CFI still has to come into to DeFi and then sort of lock in their um, and their value into these protocols. Where do you see, uh, you know, the the Cosmos ecosystem and, and DeFi and capital being locked into uh, the Cosmos ecosystem overall in 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 terms of, you know, trying to make it into the mainstream of people that are just holding crypto. So. With Cosmos, I think it offers a few things that will help get more mainstream users into the crypto ecosystem. So in order to make this stuff really useful, in order to really replicate, you know, debt capital markets and, you know, uh, existing systems in a DeFi format, I think uh, th three things are necessary. Um, one is, uh, one is um, uh, scalable transactions. So um, scalable transactions with a protocol like IBC. IBC lets you send tokens from one blockchain to another blockchain really fast, like five to seven second finality to 10 second finality. That's pretty fast. And if you could, you know, if you could apply the concept of payments to an IBC transaction, I think you can uh, think of a lot of permutations for how it can be used. So uh, scalability is important. The other is interoperability, so being able to, to um, connect between one blockchain and another. Uh, Cosmos, you know, specializes in that. And the third is privacy, which I would admit um, on the Cosmos side of things is not as heavily uh, developed. There's a few great projects like Secret Network and um, uh, NIM that are looking at the privacy side of things. But if a protocol can um, encompass those three factors, um, or not even a protocol, maybe a collection of blockchain protocols, then those things will be able to onboard a lot of main, main, uh, mainstream adoption into an existing crypto ecosystem because you're essentially replicating an, an entire financial infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, we're still a bit early days in the Cosmos space. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're uh, looking at a, a set of DeFi tools such as you know, DEXs like Osmosis, SIFTchain, Crescent, um, you know, barn and lending protocols like ourselves. And I think, um, you know, we're still early days. We're still working to get TVL into the system. We're still working to get adoption. I think um, bridging ourselves from, you know, DeFi 1.0 to DeFi 2.0, you know, that, you know, next set of logical iterations is going to be, you know, our next challenge. And we're looking forward to taking it on. Definitely. And you're right, we are early days. And, you know, looking at the, the midterm vision and the long term vision that you talked about in the beginning, um, I feel like having, you know, those improved yield curves and just more uh, sort of TradFi sort of uh, financial products that are going to be built in dApps and protocols on top of the Cosmos ecosystem should hopefully bring in a lot more capital from traditional finance and, and um, to, to, to be able to utilize it in different ways. Um, is the protocol foundation built in a way that that will be not too hard, you know, with time to develop in, um, you know, once you've built in this interoperability um, to take that next step is, are the foundations already laid for that? Yeah, certainly. So um, I'd say that for things such as the yield curve, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to build the, uh, the, the LIBOR of crypto. We're trying to build a, a term structure of interest rates for crypto. Um, I'd say that um, the foundations in, in Cosmos are good. 
Uh, that being said, um, we want to be a, a fairly universal protocol. And by universal, I mean that we don't really want to um, uh, uh, distinguish, like the, the eventual goal is that we don't even distinguish which blockchain we're on. Mm -hmm. Like I see a, a, a world where, you know, five or, you know, like 10 years from now, um, you know, when it comes to normal people using this tech, they're not going to know, okay, that's Solana blockchain, that's Avalanche blockchain, that's the, the Polygon blockchain, that's the Uniswap blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to say, well, I just want to take my asset, use it, and somehow I get this other asset back. And we think that in the future, a lot of this will be abstracted away from the protocol level where user interfaces will just be able to um, uh, you know, have a, a, a fairly, fairly significant ease of use. And to answer your question about the the, the yield curve, um, we envision building this on, on many different chains. Um, we think that um, Ethereum has really good infrastructure for facilitating this. Uh, Cosmos itself, definitely, as well as um, layer two scaling solutions like you know the Arbitrums, the ZK Syncs of the world, mm -hmm. um, the Optimisms, as well as uh, uh, sidechain architectures like the Polygons, Avalanches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to uh, to kind of uh, circle back to the main point, um, I, I think the key is is more uh, not necessarily uh, how we uh, build it, but more just getting people to use it, getting people to adopt it, as we've seen in this you know current current uh, bearer sentiment. Um, you know, uh, having logical use cases is is the key for success for a lot of these protocols. Definitely. Um, you know, sometimes they say build it and they will come, um, and, and sometimes they say, you know, some people are ready, some people are willing, and some people are waiting, and some people don't just don't even know about it, you know, and, and part of it is just bringing more awareness to, hey, look, this is an amazing product that has a lot of benefits, and um, it's sometimes it's hard to get the message out, especially when you have, um, you know, a traditionally very um, code dense and like technical barriers to entry that people don't understand that things are getting easier um, you know each and every day for people that don't understand programming and, and, and finance to start getting involved um, now you mentioned there about you know incentivization we spoke about it a little bit I'm curious um, just tying into like an UMI uh, governance token or the token tokenization of, of the protocol if that is used as an incentivization for sustainability in the protocol or if there's specific functions and, and how that helps grow the ecosystem yeah so regarding the uh, incentivization of the ecosystem um, you know, uh, DeFi summer really, really, um, you know, showed a lot of innovation, showed a lot of ways um, that protocols can use to bootstrap uh, their users. And, uh, you know, with Umi, uh, we absolutely are taking lessons learned from, uh, from, from the past in terms of being able to um, get more community involvement, get more adoption of a protocol. And so uh, the Umi token itself will also be used for uh, liquidity mining incentives and other opportunities for folks to participate in the network and to um, uh, uh, showcase some of the, the, the use cases of how this protocol works. That being said, you know, we took note of sort of this DeFi 1.0 time period where there was, uh, you know, um, r ridiculous uh, yields out there where um, yield farming got a little bit too, uh, too wild. Um, and, uh, you know, the way that we want um, to build a protocol is that we don't want to, you know, uh, have something that offers like, you know, the highest yields or, or that, that just, you know, completely illogically, you know, offers some sort of front end loaded incentive mechanism. Um, you know, from, you know, my, my perspective of looking at term structured interest rates and, you know, having been a bond trader, you know, for over half a decade prior to joining crypto, I'd say that we're not trying to create the highest yields. We're trying to create the purest yields, the ones that are most mathematically pure and the ones that most uh, closely follow the truth of how people should view, you know, risk and, and uh, return when it comes to their perspective of, you know, some of these crypto assets. So, mm -hmm. um, 
that comes back to why we want to build a term future of interest rates. We think that it's an important tool that's that's actually missing from, from DeFi right now. The reason why DeFi went a little crazy is that there wasn't a term structure of interest rates. There wasn't a way to price risk. There wasn't a way to price opportunity cost, and therefore uh, value had misrepresentations. But we think that um, if we're able to add some of these uh, new tools, we'd be uh, um, really bolstering the, the, the logic that can be applied to the, some of these crypto assets. Mm -hmm. Very well said, Brent. And you also spoke about you know upcoming uh, towards like a mainnet launch. Can you give a little bit more information on you know what needs to be done from from now until then? We, for sure. So uh, our test net is running. Uh, it's been running for a little bit over a month. And before we're mainnet ready, we actually want to test a few more assets on testnet. So um, this includes adding. Um, uh, so we actually tested a uh, Terra on the test net and um, the test net withstood some of the dramatic price drops. Um, we look forward to adding more Cosmos assets like the, the secret networks of the world, the, the Comdexes and other, other assets that could be used for barn lending the Cosmos side. Uh, we also want to test some Ethereum um, because, you know, we're a protocol that uh, wants to strive for this universal uh, cross-chain uh, status and so adding ethereum assets is a big piece of the puzzle um after ethereum and in the future we're likely going to want to add things like you know, you know solana based assets or um other other uh, uh side chain or l2 assets so um after we test out all these these uh these new features um we'll be ready for uh mainnet you know, we, we take this part, the, the, the code very seriously. We've had, you know, uh, you know, quite a few audits of the code. You know, auditing is a big piece of the piece of the puzzle. Um, you know, Trail of Bits conducted a, a, an audit on, on our leverage module, you know, very thorough audit. We released that a few months ago. And um, uh, runtime verification is also completing one right now. So we're looking forward to releasing those audit reports uh, out into the wild for folks to just really put an extra level of scrutiny on the on the open source code. Definitely good to hear, and I'm looking forward to seeing those other blockchains and assets integrated in there. For the viewers that want to follow along with those updates and like learn more about the test net and however else they can get involved, what is the best way for people to learn more? Certainly, so. Uh, definitely follow us on Twitter. It's uh, umi underscore crosschain. Uh, our Twitter also includes a link tree to all of our relevant links, including you know Discord, Telegram, um, white paper, um, all the necessary information. Um, information for uh, for understanding umi and being part of the community. Um, yeah, we're really grateful for folks out there who participate and interact uh, and. Uh, yeah, the easiest way is, you know, Twitter. You'll you'll find all the information there. Sounds great, Brent. And I will leave the description in the description the links for that as well to make it easy for the viewers. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk about all things Cosmos, DeFi, and Umi, and all the best towards all these testnet updates and in, in the mainnet. And let's follow up in the near future. Thanks so much. Really great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, looking forward to uh, continuing to build out there.